At 1,000 subscribers, I will do a massive review on Overblood 1 and 2. Again, not even released in America. And most copies being uncompletable. And at 500 likes, I will live stream Oni's PC version. Now, enjoy the video. Oni is a third person action video game developed by Bungie West, a division of Bungie. Released in 2001, same year as Max Payne and Halo. It was Bungie West's only game. Gameplay consists of third person shooting with hand to hand combat with a focus on the latter. Originally planned just for the PC, a PlayStation 2 port was concurrently developed by Rockstar. The game's style was largely inspired by the Ghost in the Shell and Akira animes. Sharing the same genre, being set in a cyberpunk world, it wears its references like a glove, with even a little bit of Judge Dredd sprinkled in. I will be mostly showcasing the PS2 port emulated, but I did play through both versions, including the PC Anniversary Edition mod, which is the truest way to play this. I will be sprinkling the footage throughout, but... Kanoka, or a resident Sergeant Makoto Kusanagi, faces off against a syndicate, your normal evil organization taking over the underworld of crime. While Kanoko and her android partner try to stop them, we begin to discover why Kanoko isn't just your average super cop. Superhero landing! Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Totally impractical, they all do it. Working for the TGTF, you'll begin to discover why she's probably able to take a thousand bullets in the Including finding out about her past and discovering the truth about all the cover-ups and lies. While the government cares so much about Kanoko. Shouldn't we check it out? How do you suggest we do that? Target neutralized, all clear. And tons of foreshadowing. Think of a third person perfect dark, without the polish of an early rare. And not just because of the futuristic anime girl in tight leather, but because of the auto-aim and level design. While the auto-aim in a perfect dark of GoldenEye makes you feel like a god-level assassin running through the halls blowing motherfuckers away, Oni, like a John Woo film, kind of forces you to get in there. Auto-aim only taking hold once you get into close range. You can use it for long-range aiming with, for manual shooting. But what is a third-person shooter without talking about the gun? Unlike other games, weapons aren't limited to certain enemies. Everyone can wield everything from plasma rifles, SMGs, handguns, grenade launchers, sniper rifles, multi-missile launchers with homing capabilities, energy beams, and green homing energy orbs of bullshit. Even a taser. You? I'll get you, bitch! Only being able to wield one weapon at a time, holstering it for melee combat. But why would you want to do that? Well...
only is ahead of its time with its movement options and close range combat or CQC. Being able to attack enemies on all sides blocking by standing still and being able to dodge by jumping or rolling out of the way. But that's not just where it ends. Using your CQC, you could even steal their weapons, knocking them down, taking their weapons from them straight up, stealing it from their hands. But they can do the same, and with numbers. One of them will gladly throw you to the ground while the other machine gun pistols you in the face. Grabs being some of the most powerful skills, specifically your back throw like Ken from Street Fighter, or a hard knockdown, be it a combo or kick to the shins, do AI doing the same to you, focusing on guns over melee. Enemies have all the same tools you do, if not more sometimes, being easy or an unbelievable chore depending on their AI at times. Multiple times I'd have a fight, wipe the floor with them, and sometimes they'd whoop my fucking ass like they were the hero of a kung fu flick. It does keep you on the edge of your seat and constantly managing your resources. But then of course what makes you special if all the enemies can do what you can do? Well, Kanoko has an ability to overheal. Using this, she gains increased damage, damage reduction, and just goes full on Ultra Instinct. On top of that, having insane mobility, parkour-like mechanics, being able to roll and jump in all directions. Your mobility is incredible. Doing your best Resident Evil laser scene impersonations using these skills. But that's when some of the problems start to come to the forefront, mostly being taming the controls. With all the combat options, you have the tendency of getting in each other's way or overcomplicating everything. Sometimes getting a kick when you want to throw or just getting a normal punch. Early on, you just stand up throwing three normal playmakers, which is still, to the very end, one of your most reliable moves. And while I love the movement in Oni, the biggest problem this game has is this 10 frames of animation. It kills all of your momentum, and it only happens when you go from forward, diagonal, to left or right. This animation has killed me multiple times, but once you get a hold of the robust options you have in combat, that's when the game starts to flow. You feel like you're dancing in and out of fights. The fights are strategic. You think on the fly between switching from unarmed to armed combat, taking out priority targets with your guns, waiting for reloads before you can go in, picking enemies off at a distance to thin the herd, and sometimes just fighting into as many of them as you can and abusing grab moves and using hurricane kicks, saving ammo and not reloading empty guns just in case you find a high powered sniper rifle or a BFG. Switching it up on you with melee specialist elites, bomber vest suicide troopers that explode on defeat. And Zangief grabbing assholes. Mixing all this together in multiple combat situations, making you think on the fly, even using bullshit tactics like dropping your gun because the BFG and sniper rifle have a cooldown between shots that resets every time you drop it, it is a very abusable option and great against bosses. Alongside overcharging. and the mobility once you learn the level design, well... The level design, at its best, has multi-tier ways of attacking, choosing what floor to go to, what rooms to avoid, what enemies to engage with, and where to just run away. 
making you think about the healing items you're using or sniper rifle you're looking for. How to get to that guy with the BFG and where to get extra ammo. But for a lot of it, you're just trying to find that switch to get to. What terminal to access to progress and what order you have to do it in. And if you miss one, backtracking through the whole level to find it. And that along with the very bullshit enemy spawns. Only after going in a certain room or crossing a certain point, even trapping you in open space with enemies with grenade launchers with no cover, they can one-shot you. And because the checkpoints are fucking brutal, you'll be going all the way back. But because most of Oni is about activating terminals with a little bit of ingenuity and an insane amount of mobility, you can speedrun a lot of this game. With just the knowledge of where to go, some of the harder levels I just gave up on and just ran to the end to fight the boss. Oni was definitely designed to be a PC title first. Moves coming out cleaner, mouse aiming, being far superior to the lock on that happens at close range. Getting your grabs 80% of the time over the 30% of the time on PS2 is a massive difference and makes me look like I know what I'm doing where on the PS2, the reticle always tries to reset, screwing up my shots. And for some reason, the PS2 version, you will unlock your moves as you progress. Or on PC, they're already unlocked. Unless that's a mod. Speaking of, because of the modding scene, you get extra levels from the cut content. Glorious HD textures, giving you great colors and not just black. Making me wish I played through this version instead of PS2 version first. Now, everything about this game is kind of half finished due to all the cut material and revamping of the game during the beta stages. It's possible that they intended much more with the story as well as the ending. It's hard to say if this was going to be one of Bungie's masterpieces, but considering games like Shogo, Mobile Armor Division had similar problems, even being the anime aesthetic. Only coming out three years beforehand, all these things when anime wasn't mainstream being hard to become a huge seller. On top of all that, Halo became a legendary franchise, is still getting games made today, and even becoming the mascot for Xbox. The final nail in the coffin is that there was an Oni 2 announced, but because of the massive success of Halo, it got pushed to the background, disappearing from history. But if you want a standalone complex game, this is the closest thing you'll get to Oh, oh shit, they made a standalone complex game. Fuck.